Hey everyone, what is up? This is the intro for uh, episode 31, which happened to be a improv podcast that we did after a stream. The stream was supposed to be our our last stream that we needed to get affiliate status on Twist, Twitch, but it turns out that the, the month lapsed, so today... I'll be doing another stream. Um, today doesn't mean any, anything to you because this is going up well after I do the last stream. So hopefully we will still be, we will already be affiliate by the time you hear this. Um, so this was us just reminiscing, talking about the first 15 episodes of Campaign 2, talking about the differences in our characters, in our streaming, or in our recording style because now we stream. We have... Um, I think we, we live in four different locations now. We got Colorado, Tampa, uh, Orlando, Kissimmee. So the setup is a lot different than it was during campaign one where we could all be together in person. Uh, so we go over that a little bit. Um, otherwise, yeah. Oh, it was all digital. So that we were going all through Skype. So the quality isn't amazing, but I, I'm actually pretty impressed with Skype's quality. Um, yeah, well, I hope you enjoy, and I hope you enjoy. And also, if you enjoy it, I would appreciate that. So, so we are, what, 14, 15 episodes in? Josh, 15. you would know. We're 15 than, episodes. Any. 15. Awesome. So we're 15 episodes in. This feels like a good good point. How's everybody feeling? How, how's everybody feeling about characters? growth i'm digging it i like having my care like i come in with a with a rough idea of what my character is and then just a lot of his personality develops as we play like the super so hippie thing did, wasn't really a plan where did the idea for the accent come from it's one of the accents i can do <laughs> i can relate there's only like two accents i can do too so the uh so what is again the i i know i told i think i told pat and justin the other character i want to do is going to be french so that's going to happen at some point how many times as a french character are you going to go medican oh constantly that's how i open up every interaction with any character Everybody's gonna be like, "What the fuck is American?" I don't know. Only instead of Americans, it's gonna be Petu Valorians. <laughs> <laughs> Justin looks so, so upset Josh, at us. <laughs> what is what is something that you've had you've had a beat a moment with Dremel that has kind of like it's it's been your moment where you're like, "Ah, oh, this is this is like what my character would do. This is a hundred percent what he would do." I think the... I guess the first moment you got into character. The first one that stands out was after we killed the the big hulking like mushroom guy in the cave. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dremel Zangu. just sat on top. Huh? Zangu. Yeah, Zangu. When we killed Zangu and, I just, and he sat on top of the mushroom and just like seethed for, I don't mm -hmm. know, probably 30 minutes to an hour of of in world time like the only mm. thing that because you guys left the only thing that brought him out was donner coming to talk to him yeah that was that was a very interesting moment and it's really cool i don't know about you but i feel uh, like i like that our characters are friends so far in this campaign yeah it's nice so Shake for those way. of you that that have actually watched the last campaign and are potentially watching now or will watch in the future um in campaign one josh and i were living together but our characters essentially had a love-hate relationship at various points in time and it was weird like to go for eight hours like being upset at each other at a table to then be like what's up man you want to hang out in the living room and play video games cool no what was weirder was playing with y'all because there were times that i'm like are, are they actually, like, mad at each other? And then, like, we would stop playing. It was like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, okay, great. I was like, okay, cool. Acting. <laughs> Acting. Well, you, jo Josh, you even said something like that before. Like, in one of the early episodes, you were like, why is Pat being a dick? Yeah. And you were like, 
Oh, because he's not being Pat. Yeah, there was. It was like because we used to record three sessions at a time over the weekend, and I, I want to say it was session one where you were just being like a fucking piece of shit to me, and and it took me until session. Like I remember we broke session one, and I was like, "What's wrong with Pat? Why is he being so mean?" I thought we were friends and roommates, and it was like halfway into session two where I'm like, "Oh shit, he's just he's being uh his character. He's being Rufio. Yeah, Rufio. Yeah." Good times. So, which is a testament to your ability to be a dick. Oh, well, yeah, I've had a lot of practice <laughs> out of character. But I so do. So now, uh, go ahead. Go for it. I just, I like that our characters are friendly this time. It's nice. It's a nice change of pace, especially now that we're not roommates. So it works out really well. Mm-hmm. And they were roommates. <laughs> and they were roommates. They lived so, where the is. Where's Thox head at right now, Carlos? Yeah, like, that's we're, a good question. We are, we are, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched, it was released on Wednesday, so go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> we are on our way to Sun Golf, to, and, and we're actually in Sun Golf, and we are in a very precarious situation. Uh, Thok is basically riding solo right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how are you feeling? What are Thok's thoughts? What's going through his head? Like... Um. Well, in typical t- Thok fashion, he tries to fix something and it goes to shit. So that's not new. Um, it's kind of a mess, really, because like not only, well, as it is, I thought Manu was the one doing all this shit, and then I feel like he's also kind of caught in this spell as well. So he's kind of like not thinking that that's the case anymore. But I. I can't think of what else I could do to break this curse from y'all. So I'm trying to think of whether or not to just ride it out. And obviously something or someone wanted me here. So on, it's like, do I just ride going, it on? Keep going. So no, you're good. On that note, so I, I want to just give a shout out to Justin. Cause that was, that's such a great misdirect or a fake misdirect. Or a well, direct. Or a direct. All, direct, all of direct, you are direct. charmed in some way, shape, or form. So, so Carlos, being that Thok was with our... It was in campaign one towards the end and really formed a bond with our initial characters. What is his... What's his vibe? What is he feeling with this new crew? These new guys that are kind of weird, a little awkward, um, and also fairly new to each other. I feel like because he, whenever I joined you guys initially, uh, he was the oddball. Like, he was the odd one out. So, like, he doesn't, like, he gives you all the benefit of the doubt. Like, uh, as it is, like, yeah, I still have, like, memories of, uh, like, Char, Absidy, and Rufio, and Dirt. Like, that's why, like, I put the tattoos that I put on him was to each one of you have a special place like in his heart pretty much for that but because like at the time if y'all haven't watched campaign one Thok was a little bit more undead looking and uh he was not a life cleric he was a grave cleric so he was a little bit more macabre and odd and not as expressionate i guess he was more uh what sort i'm looking for reserved uh, Reserved, well, not so much reserved, but he was like, he, it was almost like a part of him was missing. Like, he tried, like, he didn't really show much joy or emotion. And now I kind of feel like I can't express that. So, uh, like, if I didn't like anyone, like, I feel like he would say it right up front. Um, then again, Thok's not that smart. Like, I have a negative on my intelligence. So, as it is, that's why I'm interested in seeing what happens in this like little in Sun Gulf because it's gonna be a clusterfuck. But um, but yeah, no, like I, I like he he likes everyone. He's just kind of feeling everyone out, um, just because he's not sure. Like for example, like uh, um, he's been around a druid. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Thok actually was the very first D like D and D character I made. Uh, back like three years ago with my original campaign um, before I joined uh, Junk Drawer. And he actually left that campaign and came into this campaign. So I made that campaign my backstory. So everything that's happened 
with Thok in my homebrew or like my home campaign. That is his actual history. So I've just he's bounced around to three different campaigns now, and he's still around. So die twice. For now, and... For now. we'll see. Oh, I would oh, be so bad. I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> I've drawn so much character art of him that you haven't seen yet because it has spoilers, and I can't show any of you anything until things happen. So, you better not let Manu kill you then. Well, so. oh my god, <laughs> Alder, Alder, Alder. Yeah. So, how is he? I'll, I'll do. I'll, we can do a, an interview like this. Uh, I just oh, imagine shit, Donner in a suit, but the suit doesn't have sleeves, <laughs> but he has note cards. <laughs> it's like, it's like, a, like a buff so, Conan situation. Alda, how do you feel about the party? Yeah. So right now, I think Alder kind of feels like, um, like he's the big brother, in a sense. Um, and I don't know if you guys feel that either at, at all, but the reason that I say I feel like he's the big brother is because of the fact that you guys give him shit constantly and he hardly ever gives it back. Um, so he kind of just lets you guys go on with your nonsense and still tries to keep things under control. Um, I see him more as a mama bird because he keeps he like same reasoning logic, but he also is just like, yeah, I have to feed these idiots. Otherwise, they're going to die. <laughs> yeah, they'll forget to chew. Okay, so a bigger big brother from a broken home. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, now kind of like that. Um, uh, he, he definitely gets a little bit frustrated with you guys, um, and usually shows that on his walks alone. But <laughs> so I'd say he shows it in the group too. <laughs> do, do we know everybody's age? Just out of curiosity, like, have you guys shared your age? Mm-hmm. Or Alder with, has with, I don't with think the I people have. in the party, not not. Okay, because uh, I was like, I, I don't, don't know like how old everybody is. Now that I think about it, Flock needs to ask when you're not charmed. Actually, I think Alder shared it with NPCs. I'm not sure if you guys were necessarily there. Ah, uh, got it. Yeah, because he's 215 years old. Oh, yeah, I'm, he's a I'm young, not, a young. It looks buck. good for his age. Moisturizing. So, yeah. what's a what's a point in time that you? are looking forward to with Alder? What's something in your character development? What is something potentially in, in the future? What's what something we kind of see coming down the pike that you're excited about with this character? Um, right now, I think what's most exciting, um, there, I would say there's actually two things. Um, the first thing is I haven't really like shown off like what some of his key abilities are. Because I didn't go with like a generic circle of the, not generic, but the the main druidic circle. Like I didn't do circle of the land or circle of the moon or anything like that. I went with something that was kind of like a more, um, you know, a, a slightly different circle. So you guys haven't really seen the abilities that he has yet. So it's going to be really exciting when I get to show that off. But the other thing is right now. Um, there, especially because, you know, we're talking out of character out of the campaign right now donner has information that alder knows more about and i'm really excited for when we get to start sharing that to see how it comes into the campaign so because like donner literally last episode just found out information from ashiki that alder already knows from conversations that he had with Vindran. so it's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out Ooh. It's going to be interesting to see how that comes up in in just role play, um, yeah. Because it's it's something that's so like it's so important to Donner, but it's something that's so offhand and like something that's so throwaway to Alder that it's like, how? Why? Why would they even bring that up? Yeah, yeah. but more importantly, so I'm going to give you I'm going to give you three questions because I this one I just thought of and I'm very excited about. I think by far you are playing the most different character from campaign one to campaign two. Damn right. <laughs> what do you, what's, what's the pros and cons to Alder as compared to Shart? Whereas Shart was a rage monster, could go in and get hit a thousand times and stay up. What's the, what are the pros and cons that, that you've seen with Alder to this point? And what do you like better about Druid than you do necessarily um, Barbarian? 
big pro. Um, I have a voice at the end of the session, uh, so that's good. Because I, especially when we were going like six hours and doing like three oh, sessions yeah. in a day, like talking like this the whole time, I just didn't oh. have a voice at the end of it. It was miserable. So uh, yeah, having a voice is a super pro. Another thing that I'll say that is very pro about it is that um, if I want to, I can still be tanky, which is cool because that's something that like that's really all that I've known. So the fact that I do still have the ability to be a tank if I want a wild shape and just go in there and fucking you split some wigs or whatever, I can. It's just I got to split wigs as an animal instead to make sure that I don't die. Mm-hmm. Um, um, things that are most challenging is, um, I, honestly, it's being a my first campaign being a melee attacker who just attacks a lot. Knowing that I just have one action is difficult. You know, obviously, there's sometimes where you have a bonus action that you can go ahead and use, but for the most part, it's really just having only one action. Like yeah, I can't Josh can attack. Relate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Yeah, Mister. I used to be able to do 43 things in a turn. I miss it. Here's I remember. My Here's my second action. Here's my bonus action. Here's my cunning action. <laughs> I remember when we we did our first. We did zero session. And Josh was in battle as Dremel, and he was like, okay, I did this action, I did my bonus action, what else can I do? And we were like, move. move? <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> you can move. Yeah, that's a real thing. Uh, yeah, like it, I, it absolutely happens. I, I like, I think I like playing Dremel more than I do Absidy, only because Dremel's a lot more calm and fun loving and absidy was an anxious nervous wreck but as as like a um in like combat absidy mm. was so much fun oh yeah he you could do everything i could do everything i was like especially a, when you got the dogs oh when i got the dogs it was amazing and oh, i could i could heal so before thought got around too yeah you were fucking gross Oh, y'all were rough before you got a cleric. Yeah. Let me tell yeah. you. Watching those so, older episodes, I was like, they're going to die. This is where they die. Dice. Oh. Daddy. Oh, I was going to answer one of the other questions that you gave to Dremel first. Just yeah. the influence for his accent. Uh, I just want to let you know that the influence for my accent is that Justin told me I was going to be the cook. Um, so, basically, I, I am skittish Gordon Ramsay is what my accent was. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, that's why. Like at okay. one point, I'm like, I just want to get some good fucking food. Like, <laughs> that's funny. Finally, some fucking food. <laughs> Thank you, Dice, Daddy. That's me, Dad. You've Cheers. been Cheers real quiet. Daddy. I've been listening. I've also been taking notes on a word pad just to kind of gauge what your your thoughts are. How are you feeling? Campaign one, 15 episodes in. Campaign two, 15 episodes in. Break it down. Vastly different. Um, Campaign one was, I think, by this time, we're probably Burgermaster. Maybe we're roughly around where uh, Naked Fight was. No, Naked Naked Fight. Fight. This is a lot more uh, meticulous, which I enjoy. Um I I'm very excited for Sun Gulf. Sun Gulf was Sun Gulf was what the campaign was originally going to be, like the opening of it. So instead of you guys being in prison, you were going to be mysteriously in Sun Gulf. So I think having this 15 kind of episode buffer for you guys to kind of find your voices, find what you want to do with your characters is a lot um a lot more beneficial than it was for the first uh, campaign because it was all of us just kind of figuring things out together and also uh, me trying to navigate a pre-written adventure and uh, there are a lot of pros and cons with that uh, but I'm really enjoying this now. I'm enjoying your characters. I'm enjoying how you don't know who the big bad is. His name or their name isn't in the title. Ooh, It's hints. funny because... As you've been saying that, I'm like, so are you telling us that episodes 1 through 15 have been like the prologue, like before the credits start rolling? Mm -hmm. In my head, okay, so to break it down like Dragon Ball Z style, you go (laughs) through the Saiyan saga to get to the Frieza saga. So 
what is it? Fucking the prison, uh, Vindran, everything up until this point. That's your Saiyan saga. The biggest bad that you maybe fought was Zangu, the the dire troll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I needed to figure out and test what you guys could do. And so that could gauge me for Frieza Saga and Manu are going to be very close. Like, this is your first arc. Manu is a very important character. Um, and actually, this is a, a tidbit for you. Out of everyone I've ever made for this entire campaign, and there's a lot of people, Manu was the first person I made. Hmm. Fun fact. Mm-hmm. Which I've, me and you have already talked, and I kind of already have an idea like his importance. Like, hence the reason why I haven't just like, well, one, I don't kill people straight up, and two, mm-hmm. like, I and I will, and I will say this, Carlos, if only you knew how important Manu is. Like, oh, that's so a big hit right there. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Like Th- things will since... trigger, uh-huh. and it will then cause the rest of like Manu is the beginning of the campaign. I I really like the way that you've revealed him over time, because if I remember correctly, the first episode is where Thok ran into him, right? Because we right. started with mm-hmm. Thok. So he's comes... the one that imprisoned <clears throat> me, pretty much. Right. So he's the reason we all came together. And he's he's yep. dark and mysterious and just you don't know much about him except that he's he's an antagonist. And then he's you get probably fir- dreamy. He's oh he's sexy as he's fuck. He's very handsome. <laughs> um, I'll draw him eventually. I will yeah, I would, you will. I need a Thok Manu like confrontation at the table. Well that that's literally like I've been looking at pictures of like just people sitting at tables, like you know, one in front of the other. Mm-hmm. And I've thought about doing one from like a behind Fox point of view, but I kind of want to okay. like show his frustration too. So it's like, yeah. like my the, the wheels are spinning, but like, hopefully I can get it done whenever. I will. I will also say time in the first episode because it'll be fun when everything ends. I have hinted and I have made allusions to almost every single plot point that's going to be in this campaign. Oh God, Ooh. that doesn't surprise Damn, me. Doc. I'm gonna have to rewatch all that shit. So, in in saying that, mm-hmm. what's it been like building a world? Let it l- let people know what it's what it's been mm-hmm. like for you. Kind of let us into your process a little bit because okay, okay. it's been it's been extensive. It's been yes. I, I know from we had what a two hour phone call to set mm-hmm. up the world just for just for Donner. So, um, this process has been a lot more. Um, it's been a lot more involved than the previous process, which was just, I got the three of you together and I'm like, what do you want to play? Um, we have that as well, but I was very uh, adamant about the importance of what you wanted and what you wanted to play and what you wanted your own art to be. And so the two or three hour conversation I had with you, Pat, I had with everyone else. I had a three hour conversation with Carlos and a two hour conversation with Mike and another three hour conversation conversation with with josh and we just sat down and we literally hashed everything out and all of you gave me such wonderful information that it already was able to mesh fairly well in a pre-existing story that i had so as far as building a world uh it's no secret that the world i'm building is was originally going to be with my other stream which is top tabling uh which was that um you know, I really liked what was built there. However, um, through my frustration and my creative process, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of use the the history, but make something my own. So I decided if Top Tabling is going to be like the six one six universe, if we're going to comic book it, then my world is going to be the ultimate universe. It's going to be sixteen ten. Everything is going to be slightly different, but same theme. So. Anya and the Dragon Wars is a very big thing in this particular set, as opposed to the other one where it's all three heroes survive. In this one, it's only she survives. So delving into that, I have a lot of mythos in the back of my head. Some of you know to an extent, and some of you don't. Um, There's just, there's a lot in my head. 
And sometimes I get worried about if I'm giving too much or I'm not giving enough. It's it's really interesting kind of juggling it without having like a, uh, a point of reference like a book. I, I if, think you're revealing a, a good amount. I, I think like it's <clears throat> enough to get us interested. Like I, I kind of like you can feel what things are likely to be important. Um, and maybe some things aren't like I took the the um, was a Valorian army flyer. Yeah. I took that because that that was a little meta, but it, it feels like that's something that could be meaningful going sure. forward. Um, how how are you keeping track of everything? Because with the first campaign, at one point you started making a campaign Bible website. Yes, I was looking for it. Oh, I think I moved it. Um, sorry to interrupt. Yes, I have a uh, composition notebook that is kind of my my own campaign Bible. Um, like I said, most things are in my head. Excuse me, but. What I do is I'll scribble down notes during a session and then I'll transpose those notes into the Bible. So, for example, like Gracie and Charlotte. Charlotte was a character I made literally during the session. I'm like, fuck, I don't have a barmaid. And then she ended up being a major character in the next episode. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of on the fly kind of having ideas and then, you know, sticking by your guns. I think as long as I have a rough idea of what I want the story to be, you guys kind of direct your own way to there, which is really interesting for me. So it's not even me like guiding you. You just kind of go that way. Like good example is I teased Falk last session with a path that went away. You went there and you were expecting a separate path, but instead you found Manu's camp. So if you decided not to go to Manu's camp, you wouldn't have found the diary. You wouldn't have found the horse track prints. Like you wouldn't have found more information. So it's, it's interesting what you guys do. And then because I know everything about your characters, different character beats are very interesting and in how things are going to play out and how you, you all are setting yourselves up for kind of a foreshadowing or uh, a certain arc. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. what... Do you have a favorite moment in the campaign so far? A favorite moment in the campaign? I... There's one moment in the campaign... If it's not Donner, I'm going to be upset, but it's fine. (laughs) So, there's one... One episode of the campaign that I watched over and over. And I kept just really pouring over it. And... I'll explain after, but that is the conversation between Falk and Manu the last time. And I will say that because I was getting frustrated with how I was portraying Manu. It was like episode 10. You still haven't asked his name. I'm like, fuck. Okay. So I also didn't want to play him as a cocky kind of character. Hey, Ma, how you doing? (laughs) Go back. (laughs) This is social distance, Mom. Six feet. Six feet. I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah, you could have snacks, but if you want to be in the back during a stream, you can do that. You're just going to be on live yeah, TV? Yeah, you're going to be on the computer. I'm not living There's with my mom, guys. I'm, I'm, very, ones, I'm very single. Uh, I am. Very There's single. ones of people that are going to see you. <laughs> There's holes of people. Uh, anyway. That's um, not my mom. That's my roommate. That's my roommate, and she sometimes does my laundry and makes me food, uh, and loves me very much. No, we got seven people in right now. Just saying. Hey, what's like, up? Um, so seven live with your mom. It's cool. Don't do that. But maybe. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> I'm sorry. Mom. It was. Um, so my moment was Manu because at that point I was playing him as this cocky. Um, almost arrogant kind of character and we've seen that you know between Curse of Straw and every other fucking character is just cocky and the conversation between Thok was I wanted to portray him as absolute I wanted to portray him as someone who could put in doubt into his head and be honest about it well you succeeded yeah like this is his this is his viewpoint I, I don't believe, like, I can't believe how you don't see this. Like, you know, we could be good together. We could be, you know, a right and left hand. Like, 
I wanted to play him differently. So instead of playing like cocky, I'm Prince Vegeta, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to play him as trying to do his best. He doesn't have all the answers. And he's just trying to do what he's told while at the same time, you know, trying to be empathetic. So that's that's my favorite moment so far. Circling, circling back to the way that you introduced him and has have built him as a character, that's actually a point I was going to hit on. Is that on in the first episode, he is, like you said, he's Prince Vegeta. He's just kind of a dick. Mm-hmm. He's just like, oh, this is what it is. And then by 10, he's a little more... I don't know, utilitarian. Maybe. Okay. He he is like he's doing what he's doing because he thinks it's the right way. But he's still right. like um I don't know, to to Thok he's still a completely antagonistic force. He doesn't have any humanity to him. It's like I just I, you you have some good ideas now, but I still don't like you as a person. I have no reason to. Right. And then us going down that other path <clears throat> gave us the notebook where he's writing to his sister every yeah. single day. And and that little bit of humanity makes him more interesting. And then to find out that, again, spoilers, when we get into the town and everyone is under the spell, he's also under the spell. Which this whole time... Well, maybe. Huh? Maybe. Maybe. It, maybe. I, he appears to be under the spell. But up until that point, we have thought that he was the one who was causing whatever, uh, whatever havoc was in Sun Gulf. Like, it was smart because, like, and sorry to, like, interject, no, but that was um, uh, it made him human. That's the whole thing. Like, Falk didn't really see him as human before. He just saw him as Anubis's, like, right-hand man or, mm-hmm. uh, like, a, a projection of Anubis. Right. And doing that, like, it's like, oh, shit, I gotta remember that. Or human humanoid but you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. he's mortal he's just like me just and like it it became relatable so now i'm like fuck i can't just hate this guy to hate him like i it's it's a conflicting feeling for both as the player and the character for me Mm. so good job i hate you (laughs) thank you good job um what I will say is in the top tabling universe or the 616 universe, uh, avatars are a very real thing, you know, champions of certain gods. And in that campaign, they usually talk directly to that God. In this, I wanted to change it a little bit where they're not directly avatars. They're not called avatars. They're called bearers. And I think um, the earliest I introduced that was with Ketra as being the torch bearer. Um, so there's, you know, there's a, a sight bearer and a storm bearer and a, a life bearer and a death bearer. Um, so I think that's also an interesting dynamic because you haven't really met besides Thok hasn't really met a bearer before someone who has taken on the responsibility and the, the weight of that God. So when, if you can't say this, is totally fine. So, like, would Duke be considered, like, the sight bearer? Because he, is he the sight follows bearer. Helm? He's, he's not only follows Helm, he was chosen by Helm. Got it. Which, if you, if you go into the, the PDH, a big difference between clerics and paladins are clerics worship a god, and they get benefits from worshiping the, the god. Paladins, on the other hand, are chosen by a god. Mm. where Duke is in a rare case where he's a cleric, but he was chosen by Helm to be the sight bearer. So, <clears throat> I mean, you can delve into it of how different it is from Helm himself and Duke, but he is, he is the sight bearer. He is the, um, to put it in more comic book terms, he's silver surfer before Galactus comes. He's the one to make sure that everything is set up gives the other person a second chance, and then he goes, okay, she's... Uh, Justin, you just cut out. What was that? Cut out. You're back. I'm cut out. I'm sorry. You guys cut out a little bit too. No, you're back. Sorry. <clears throat> so was, was Duke a cleric before he was chosen, or did that take him down the cleric path? No, he was... So he was always a cleric originally. Um, I haven't really sat down and really thought about how Ultimate Duke is different from... 
uh, Tyranny of Dragon Duke. There's there's a lot of similarity similarities, but I think the big difference is I want to say he was able to defeat Tiamat because in that game we played Horde of the Dragon Queen and we weren't able to get to that point. Um, oh, that's what I'm playing with my other campaign. Exactly. I have a big insight on that. Um, but he was uh, a utility in that game, and so he's a utility now still. But we added extra things with it, like Rufio and Duke have a huge backstory together and a huge history of Duke was the Alfred for a while. And um, sometime between being the Alfred and taking care of Rufio's parents and Rufio, he became the sight bearer. And he had to quit being that person. You know? Hmm. That's, uh, that's a lot to think about. That's, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. There's, there's a lot of really awesome, awesome layers to having our own kind of universe to live in. And I say that as I have this sitting right next to me and I will be thumbing through it <laughs> as soon as, as soon as we're done here. Um, Oh, Does God. anybody have any Donner questions? Because I can't ask those for myself. I will, I will say before we move on to Donner questions and I go to the restroom, Fock, did you pick up on Duke saying our boy is doing well? I did. I did. I did it. Okay. I heard that. I, I was just wondering sure. which one. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was like, wait, which boy? Like The question Ruth- is, and I'll, I'm going to go to the bathroom while you think about it. Who would be a captain of a guard for a holy army? Because out of your old group, there's only like one person, and he was my favorite person. So I'm going to pee now. <laughs> Lowell's JK, it's dirt. Yeah. It's sharp. Definitely dirt. Oh, yeah. for sure. Of a holy army, it's definitely yeah. him. For sure. <clears throat> definitely well, dirt. <laughs> as it was, like literally as he's talking right now, like my brain is going like this because it's like, okay, well, if gods choose the people, so if Anubis brought me back, was he trying to choose me to be his bearer? It's like... Yeska. <laughs> Bears. Do you know well, that? Bear. Do you know that? Bear. Do you know that? Well, Donner, we're to yeah. you now. How do you feel 15 episodes in? Uh, so missing an episode sucked i didn't like that um but i was in horrific shape uh and i needed to get healthy for the wedding obviously so yeah, i was corona. literally got it <laughs> did not have corona um thankfully um but i was in bad shape uh but i did get to listen to that whole episode with you guys so that was cool um i feel like i didn't really get to have a moment uh until last episode uh, where I had a very long, like it got to the point where I looked at the clock and I was like, Oh shit. I've, I've been, it's just been me and Justin for like 35 minutes and I felt a little bad, but I was also like, how long can I pull this? Like, how long can we keep this thread going? Cause there's some good information. <laughs> um, but I feel good. I feel a very comfortable in Donner for some reason. Um, I feel like I've been able to kind of get into this character a little easier than I could Rufio. Um, I don't know if it's, I kind of credit it to the, the major accent change. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it, it really separates me from a character very quickly. Um, and the way that I think and the way that I would do things in the way that a character does things. But, um, I really like I really like playing Donner so far. Like it's it's already I think more fun than Rufio was just because Rufio had a lot of growing to do and it took him a long time to do it. And I think you you now know what's fun in a character too. Cuz Rufio For was sure. all us just figuring not just our characters out but the game out. Yeah, I I will always remember in that first episode when you were like, maybe we should just restart. And I was like, no, 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 let's just go through it. And like, that was literally, that was basically our like slogan for the first campaign. It was just like, fuck it, we'll do it live. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so well, I got to oh, go for it. No, my question is, uh, um, Donner, you typically are fairly secretive uh, about everything that you do with your characters. On a percentage wise, how much have you revealed to the group about who Donner is so far? Oh shit! How much have I? Um, 
I wouldn't say zero, but like like seven <laughs> percent. Now, and part of that Wolf. is yeah, it's not a lot. Part of that is also because he's missing time, so Donner isn't still isn't a hundred percent certain of of who Donner is. He has inklings, he has ideas, he has some some leeway and he obviously knows like where he came from he knows his family and whatnot but he's still putting those pieces together about how he became or how he came to be where he is currently justin are you back yeah i'm back mike just asked uh how much of donner have i revealed uh percentage wise and i said seven percent how do you feel about that as a percentage Mm. mike Revealing himself to the party or from yeah, interactions like, that we've had. No, and, and to the party. Like he's like how much of the part of the party do they know about Donner? And I said about seven percent. I would say about ten. So, so not a lot. Yeah, still yeah. pretty low. A good portion. <laughs> I'm really like, interested to the, see where the lilacs go. Because it it it's very clear that it's a very large part of of your backstory and it's it's mm-hmm. before your gap in time because it, it is that what it is it's a singular gap in time or is it holes there there are holes so it is a large gap um but i guess it is one 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 hole but it's massive it's a right. giant hole in time and he's just not sure what happened for a, an extended period of time and that's why I'm so interested to see where the lilacs go because we've had we've we've had it pop up once and I think it was for like a a temple or something mm-hmm. but it, it has to go so far back that it's at the core of of who you are it's a it's like deep seated it's not just oh yeah I grew up around lilacs you know yeah no it's uh it's a, something and that was I got to credit uh, Dice Daddy for that too. That was a something that him and I talked about briefly, and he has morphed it into what it is, and it's becoming something that is like driving Donner as a person, which is really cool. So now I have to ask, just for the hell of it, like um, for all three of you, because you guys, uh, all of you, rolled new characters between campaign one and two. Mm-hmm. Um, how elaborate of backstories did each of you write because for example i only had a six to seven year time gap that i had a feeling that was it but you guys pretty much had to create a character from scratch starting at level 10 do you want to start pat yeah i'll start um so i wrote more for donner than i did rufio um and Justin and I have been working on this character since before Strahd was over. I knew Rufio wasn't coming back before we had finished Strahd. Which I don't know if I've I've thrown that out that information out to you guys before, but Justin uh, Justin I and I have been working on this since before Strahd was done. So it's been there's there wasn't a whole like, I think I did like a page, two pages something like that for backstory, but it's been multiple conversations. It's been a lot of conversation. Hmm. Um, I'll go next. Um, Definitely wrote more backstory this time than I did for Shart, considering Shart was loosely based off of the plot of the Fast and the Furious movies. And that thing you do in your Uh, pants. Yeah. Yeah, no, I Shart all the time. Um, So... Uh, I think Justin would uh, vouch for me on this, that I actually wrote a fairly extensive backstory this time around. And um, he helped me a lot in kind of like building it. Like there's a lot in Alder's past that you guys have no idea about. Like you have no idea why he's a druid. Like, so there, there's a lot that you'll find out. Um, I'll give you a, a, no, I'm not going to give you a spoiler. Just kidding. I thought about Good. it, but I decided not to. Good. Um, Don't. But like I said, there is a lot that you're still going to find out that he hasn't revealed. He's kept a lot of who he is and why he's the way that he is close to his chest so far. Um, and I, I, a lot of it has to do with where he comes from. Um, so I'm really kind of curious to see if that's going to be something 
um, that plays a factor into the story and when it comes up because you'll end up getting some cool insight of to some like sneaky shit that Alder can do. He's a rogue. So, no, he's not a rogue. Sneak attack. But he's <laughs> uncanny dodge. Yes. Sneak he's attack serious. wild shape. Multi class. <laughs> I no, a halfling. <laughs> what well, and he's a halfling. And he's John Mulaney. <laughs> I'm new in town. <laughs> Uh, I wrote, I don't know, Justin, I think I wrote a couple paragraphs. Mm-hmm. A lot of it was flushed out with you and me. My, my strategy for characters is very much bullet points that inform how I make decisions. And then mm-hmm. the details get flushed out as the character interacts with the party. So I, I had that he was from a mountain tribe, that they were the, they were the like defenders of the mountain people like the dwarves inside um right so which is why he knows a little bit of of dwarvish but i i don't i like i have his relationship with his family but i I try not to go too deep because i i like the organic kind of uh last minute panic of improv to build the story like the making him a hippie was never part of the plan i don't know why i did it i just like too blessed to be stressed what's up dude yeah yeah. So now that's just who he is, and and that kind of informed the super laid back, peace loving. But then when something goes wrong, he just like snaps, which I, I think yeah. creates a. It's a, definitely a fun dynamic to play. Definitely is. Uh, I mean, you're paying. You're playing at this point polar opposites, and this is me knowing everything about Drummond. You're playing a very polar opposite character of Absidy, and how has that? How has that been for you? Uh, from a character perspective, it's been good. Yeah. I like it a lot. Um, Apsy was fun to play, and I I don't know about you guys, but I've when I've made my characters, there's a lot of who I am at the time put into the character. And when I made Apsity, I know we've talked about this on, on past podcasts, but I was in like mm-hmm. not a great way. So he was... He was where I was trying to go. A lot happier, a lot like, oh, fun loving, woo, just go, you know, just trying to get past the shit that was going on. Um, right. Dremel, I'm in a much more stable place, so I have that kind of relaxed thing to it. And I think it's more fun to play because it reinforces that. And mm-hmm. I also don't have to be spastic, which can get tiring. So oh, can yeah. So can the, the gnome voice doing it up here. Like that, it can get old. But I, I do like the change of pace. I, I also, on that note, I'm super interested to eventually flesh out where Absidy went during these seven years. Yeah, I have yeah. an idea. Do you? Mm-hmm. We should talk Spoilers. after the stream. <laughs> I always have an idea. Dude. I know you do. That's why you're the one who crits. I am the one who crits. Well, <clears throat> if I'm you also... trust me. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, go ahead. Your point's more important. I was going to say, if you trust me, like, I love these characters or the your old characters as much as you do. Um, just know that I'm going to take care of them. So I think the first major hints or, you know, shared universe is when we found out about Charlotte and Sharp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was maybe two episodes ago. And that was a conversation that I had with I to an extent because I have I have an idea for him, Sharp and obviously Mike has an idea of where Sharp is and I very much have an idea where Absidy is and I have an idea where Rufio is so it's not it's all in my head and that's the and that's the issue it's all in my head yeah what I was gonna say is like that's the thing that I one of the things that like me as an observer is most curious about is obviously I know that right now you're in control of Shark. Like, you're at the driver's seat with him. But the fact that, like, we knew he was going to be a part of this world, but the fact that you built him into it as, like, now we know someone that's connected to him that's not Thok, that's cool. And also the conversation that we had about that was very, like, off the cuff, and it just kind of happened really fast. Uh, And it was just kind of, like, a cool... Like, literally... 
we had been introduced to Charlotte and then the next and, and then like the fight pits happened because no, we were introduced to her before the fight pit, I think. Yeah. And like the in it was the episode before the fight pit. And then at the fight pit, that's when Justin like messaged me right before we started, like literally while we were sound checking. And he was like, what do you think about if Charlotte is a uh, shirt's daughter? And I was like, the timeline doesn't make any sense. And he's like, adopted daughter. I was like, the timeline makes sense. I don't think we knew that. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah, spoiler. Well, well, good job. My bad. I'm drinking. Like, chill. <laughs> Yo, this is my fourth one, and I'm buzzing. <laughs> Dice Daddy has three, a good and I don't feel nothing. My glass is um, empty, and I'm out of alcohol. Oh, no. Social distancing. <laughs> Social distancing. It's okay. Me and Jordan's yeah. desk are six feet away. Uh-huh. Good. That's good. No, that's why I was curious. I was like, you know what? I was like, I didn't have to go through that, so I'm kind of curious to know, like, how much work you guys had to put in. I'm just, I'm yeah. very much. No, that like, was a improv. really good question. Like, Im- improv just is the best for me. The best way to build the characters because it it sinks it in my brain more and it makes it more meaningful to the people around, like the actual party. Oh, I'm so bad at improv. I don't even know why I play this game. <laughs> 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 I hate thinking on the oh, fly. Like, there's so many times that we've ended a stream, and I'm like, "Shit, I could have said this," or "Damn it, I could have done that." And but oh, it me is too. what it is. One hundred percent. Like, thankfully, with this character, like, I'm very comfortable with him because I have been playing him in real life for so many years. It's been three years now that I've been playing Thok. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, now it's pretty fluid. However, the uncertainty it's one of those things that it's. A lot is happening with him, not only with the Manu thing. There's a lot other things happening that y'all aren't aware of. So it's it's an interesting mixture of emotions in there. Did Was there a point where you thought about changing characters for this campaign? I thought about it, but I like... Again, I, if I would have changed characters, I would have taken thought to another campaign. Like, I would have probably joined him um, with Random Encounters. I, pro- I would have probably created him there. But I knew that they were, like, running towards the end of their campaign. Because we just started campaign two. So now we're at level three. Okay. Um, I would have probably wow. brought him over there. And we all ended at, like, level 15, 16. And during the final battle, we each had... Um, if we died, our DM made us come back to life for, I think it was a minute at level 20. So we had to roll both our level 16 character and our level 20 character. Um, but I, I love playing Fox so much and I love like his story because like part of me wishes that I can transfer the information of what has happened in campaign one like from the original time I made him to all of you guys because there's a lot that's happened with him especially dying the first time coming back. Um, like but I like playing support. I love playing clerics, and a half orc cleric isn't a very common thing. So that's why I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring him back. I kind of want to see where his story goes. And obviously, like, I don't have uh, a really fleshed out idea where I'm gonna go with him. So it's kind of like all surprise to me too. So um, bringing him back, honestly, kind of was like a no-brainer like i just i honestly thought rufio was coming back but that was another reason why i did it yeah <laughs> yeah that's why i made such a strong bond with him at the end of campaign one thinking that that motherfucker was gonna come back <laughs> but nope no nope. man well it's Oops. good that you have uh justin to kind of steer the ship of, mm. of thok's story because he doesn't like compliments, but he, he is one of the most creative people I've ever met. And he genuinely cares yep. about all of our characters. So, Oh, he does. And I, poor thing, I feel so bad because like, I have thrown so many random things at him. I'm like, hey, so I kind of want to go this angle with him. And I kind of want to do that with him. Will this work? Can I do this? So like, there well, has I mean, been like communication there. If I remember correctly, didn't you not tell Justin that you were going to renounce Anubis at the end of Strahd? You just no, did that it? was... I just did it. Like, I didn't even know I was going to do it. 
so yeah, that's where I'm going to go ahead and say, fuck you. You actually are pretty good at improv because oh, yeah. that moment was so dope. Like that was legitimately my favorite thought moment from campaign two because none of us fucking saw that shit coming. And then like, you, I'm sure you pissed Justin off a little bit because of the fact that he was like, uh, okay, I got to think of that right now. But <laughs> I mean, it was seriously, it was so dope. It so. was just so organic. Like when I did it too, I was just like, you know what? I was like, what would he do at this moment? Like the ultimate evil is gone from this land. Like he feels like he accomplished what he was essentially brought back to do. Um, well, he was brought back to do something else, but he felt like that's not the path that I would choose. And, so I was like, if I die, I die. So that's why I did it. He does, he does. I mean, now he has something to live for, but like back then it was nothing. But now he's built, you know, a crew. Like he has his own, like the closest thing he has to a family, not only in his old, you know, campaign group, like with Absidy and Char and Rufio, because he still feels like they're still part of his family, even though they're so distant. Um, he he has you know the family that he's built in the crew like me and justin like when during campaign zero when it was that one-on-one -on -one, we went through and the amount of information we have on that crew and how many people are on that ship and the specifics of races classes this that like there's a binder full somewhere in this hot mess of a room right now mm -hmm. that has all that information in and so it's just now he has something to live for <clears throat> some form of normality where before it was like well i was brought back to life to get rid of something and i don't know what to do from here so if i die i die and now he doesn't have that mentality yeah how do you guys feel about doing this whole thing digitally versus all the in-person campaigns Pat has a thing. Definitely <laughs> different. But um, before before Pat gets into that, um, I'm a I, I am with Pat on the school of thought that I, I don't like it as much as being in person because I feel like in person there's a lot more emotion that can get put into it. But at the same time, um, it's grown on me a lot faster than I thought it would. So I'm I'm content and enjoying still doing it digitally um the spark isn't lost which is what i'm happy about well especially during this time right now where obviously a lot of the world is practicing the social distancing from one another like we really didn't have to change anything with the drunk drawer stream like we're still doing the exact same thing we're still have this exact same setup um with a lot of different places where i also help out and stream and play we kind of had to change all that. Like, Random Encounters, we all met in person. And now, you know, we have to go ahead and they've, you know, you know been asking me a lot of questions of, you know, what does Junk George do? You know, how, you know, is there any way that you can help us out? And of course, they've helped us out so much. And I'm like, of course I can help you guys out. Um, but even like my personal, like, my home, like, campaign group that I don't stream, like, for the first time, we tried it on Skype the other day and it actually went pretty great. So, like, there's like advantages of being there in person, mm -hmm. but well, like I said, especially right now, things that we weren't foreseeing of all this happening, like kind of, you know, it benefited us that we already knew how to do this online. Um, but I do also relate with the disconnect. There's something about being in person with one another that um, you miss. And obviously online, every once in a while, you kind of, even as much as we try not to every once in a while, like we both talk at the same time and it's like, wait, what'd you say? Like, and it almost like loses a little bit of the fluidity, not a much, but the fluidity of the like moment, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Pat. Yeah. I, uh, it's hard to disagree. Um, I feel like, I mean, Mike and Carlos both touched on it. Like, the emotion, the realness of it. Um, you know, like when, when Absidy was saying goodbye to Tatiana, um, like that was real emotion, real feels like when Shart, yeah, exactly. When Shart said goodbye to his brother, like 
that was real emotion at the table, real feels. And it's not to say that I don't think there's going to be emotion this time, uh, especially because we have Justin as a DM and he has an amazing way of, of, you know, bringing those elements out in a story. Um, but there does feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect. Um, it's, I've always been a very, um, like touch based person too. Like I can't learn to do something unless I'm physically doing it myself. Mm -hmm. And there's something about having a battle map and moving pieces on it that I miss because it just gives you such a cool scope of everything. Like being able to kind of like look at it from the side and be able to see the distance and how this person's doing or what you think this person's going to do, or is there cover here? And it's a really cool thing that I miss. Um, I also miss having like just the visual representation of having our, all of our pieces on the board together because that's just a very like unifying thing to me mentally and uh, not getting to see our characters really together yet um whether it be in art or whatever um especially like that physical like having the pieces on the board it's it's just different for me and uh i don't like it as much yeah i before i go to justin because i think his will be the most interesting since he's the dm i feel the Mm -hmm. same way i i like that we are doing it weekly i like the consistency where Every week, we know we're going to be doing it for about two and a half hours. But the same things that Pat was saying about how we had all the tactile bits, like seeing the people roll, the excitement was was there, moving the pieces, um, it all added to the enhancement of it. And also, with with the stream, we do have technical issues, and I kind of have to monitor things as it's going, which... It doesn't take me out, but it is another thing I have to think of. So it's to sum it up, it's something that I'm very grateful that we have, but I will always prefer the in person stuff. I think I'll I think I'll like it more when we are, have the ability to kind of upgrade a little bit. Mm-hmm. When I'm not looking at you like roll twenty and and the video isn't the best and you know uh, there's a little bit of a delay like. I think I'll like it more when there's when we have the ability, which thankfully we've we've hit, you know, a milestone to be able to put money into the stream. Um, but I'll like it a little more when we have a little bit of an upgrade. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, Justin, um, <clears throat> it's interesting from a a DM point of view. Um, I think all of you have hit on basically what makes sitting at a, uh, a table a lot more emotional, magical than sitting behind a computer screen. Um, but I think on the other hand, um, kind of looking at a gift horse in the mouth, um, it's, it's allowed us to play regularly, which is something that was a big thing for me. Uh, scheduling as most, uh, role players will know is a big killer of campaigns. Um, Whether it's playing every two weeks, every month, once a month, um, every two months, it it can get, you know, real life gets in the way. And I definitely understand that. I definitely understand that. Um, But it allows us to play with Josh in Colorado that I know every week Josh is going to be there Unless, of course, something happens. But Josh is always going to be there, able to play with us. And we'll be able to get great Dremel moments out of it. As opposed to a year or so ago, it was a lot of, well, nah, we can't really do this because it's, you know, so-and-so a nice month. Or, you know, oh, I need to, I haven't spent time enough with this person. I need to, you know, neglect. Uh, it's it, it allows us to be connected and be together. And I, I will be forever grateful for that. Yes, it doesn't have the same kinetic feel as Pat ex- explained earlier as, you know, seeing the pieces and the minis. But, you know, for what we've had and for what we have, I mean, Carlos has made fantastic chibi little miniatures for you guys. He even made them for uh, fucking Arclight and... Um, oh, yeah. Oz. 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 Yes. I was like, who the and hell Oz. was the other one? 
Um, like he made he made things for us. Yes, it's not the same as going on like Hero Forge and making a character and painting them. That's you know, and there will always be a piece for that. But you know, if we can come up with every once in a while where we can sit down, like making the maps from Roll Twenty have been great. David Hemingway's all of his art. I mean, that's the main reason why I shot them out every episode. They're they're built very well. And it's something that I'm not concerned like, oh, is this going to look bad? Um, but there is, yes, definitely a kinetic field. I have a whole like bunch of XPS foam in a storage locker somewhere where, you know, depending on if we plan it enough, I can make a tactical terrain for that eventual when all of us can come together. Because there has to be at least one, two, three, or four instances when that happens during the course of this. And obviously they'll be planning, but, you know, I think what we have now is really great. I know that if we were all together, it'd be better, but I definitely don't, I'm not um, ungrateful for what we have. Did I rant? I ranted a little you didn't bit. Rant. No, no, it's, it's okay. I actually have one more question for you because I know we're kind of getting late, so we're probably going to wrap up soon. But Justin... 15 technically 15 weeks of episodes in um overall i believe we're 18 weeks in as a whole mm -hmm. since we started this campaign we haven't even leveled up once yet no how long no. do you think this campaign is going to go i will say it's gonna go as long as you make it <laughs> Don't die. that helps me zero i love it we all commit <laughs> honor suicide no i yeah. have an idea i have ideas for leveling up it's not so i am as far as a dm and dms can come at me i'm very against experience points um because i have seen it to where if your experience base is based off of experience points every single conversation is going to be about you know, it's not going to be about the story or about what you're building. It's going to be how much experience did we get? Did we level up yet? Did we level up yet? And that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create something that's dynamic, something that's going to be interesting for you, that's going to be interesting for me, that we as a unit don't get bored of. And that's a big thing for me. Yeah, and no, I agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're... I don't want us. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I don't want us to get bored enough that we reboot everything, that we start over again, and Donner goes away, and Alder goes away, and Drummle goes away, and Thok goes away, and I'm like, okay, guys, we're going to make completely new characters, and this is what the, the game's going to be, and I don't want that. So, you know, adding different elements, teasing you, and hopefully, you know, because there is a, a beginning and end of this story in my head how you get there is entirely up to you but i'm interested to see how you get there and i think that's what also drives you guys is how do we get to the end what is the end yeah i think i don't think we even know what the story is yet so <laughs> it'll become clear i think I by know. the either the end of the first arc or the beginning of the second arc And Whoa. I've I told Pat on his bachelor party night before everyone joined up, like the first the first arc, if the first arc of Dragon Ball Z is the Saiyan saga and that's Stoneward, then the second arc of the Frieza saga is gonna be and I, I've dubbed it in my head as death. So oh, take good. that as what you will. It has nothing to do with Thok. Oh, no, God. of course not. Dremel's going to <laughs> so, die. We going to die. No, just Dremel. Don't take my thunder. Fun. Oh, okay. Fun, sorry. Uh, fun question. Does anybody else have a secondary character rolled? Nope. No, but I have an I idea. I have my French. I have an idea. I have an idea too. Because I tend but... to make characters, and I kind of like have an idea of like what level to put them at depending on which of my three campaigns I die first. So uh, one of the, one of the cool things about Donner and I, I don't mean to blow my own horn here. Cause I, I think I've been doing a good job at being impartial for the most part. 
But one of the cool things is when we got to roll for that magical item, the one I got was my necklace, which stabilizes me after I go unconscious. So it's really cool. It's awesome to have. But the way that we did it is that it's not it's not that magical item. It's the like the my magical item in D and D Beyond is called the Parapad of Wound Closure. And we took that and we've kind of homebrewed it a little bit. We didn't change anything, but in the game it's something different than what it is in D and D Beyond. And I really like and I'm really looking forward to role playing that and like giving more information about that and other backstory things that are coming and on the brink and lilacs and you know this is something that like i've really been looking forward to and i'm excited to get into fox arc and i'm excited to get on the boat but i'm also excited to like teach and learn everyone about donner because there's just so many there's so much more depth to him than you guys know at this point even 15 episodes in that like i'm just excited I'm excited about getting on the boat, too, because, like, I ain't gonna lie, like, I have it right here, actually, for whenever we actually do meet up in person, like, it's... <laughs> That's awesome. It's so cool. It's so big. Yeah, it's, you said. I think it took me, like, a month to print, maybe a little bit more. What are you printing but... now? You said you had a printer running, right? Yeah, my printer is going right now. It's printing a... Uh, my character for my other campaign is a tiefling... Monk slash I just multi-class into a druid, um, which I have a version of him here, um, but uh, he has wings because he's I took a variant feat. But um, I'm making a like big version of him, like the same way that like, I have Fock here as like oh nice pretty decent size. So I'm making a big one, but because he has wings, it is gonna take like six days. It's on day like two and a half right now. So. Damn. Yeah, so I keep having to supervise it because some of the supports have already like not really come out. So we're gonna see how uh, how good it's gonna come out. Maybe it'll fix itself. I don't know how it do. Yeah. So, <laughs> but sorry. Anyways, continue. You guys are talking about um, the other two haven't answered. Answered what? Wasn't that the question? I don't know. Uh, did we have a question? No. Well, speaking Let's... of, the, did y'all? Did everybody? Because I returned, I came with all the magic items I already had. Did everybody roll for magic items, just out of curiosity? And you don't have to say what it is if you did. I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that was wild for me is that I actually rolled for the Staff of the Woodlands, which was just, like, kind of the most perfect item that he could have. Uh, For a so nature. Yeah. He's so good at nature. No, so nature, nature is nature is different. <laughs> uh, are woodlands um, a type of nature? Yes, lawyered. Shut up, Josh. <laughs> but no, but um, I, I the only thing that ended up happening with that is that when I rolled for it, Justin had a real internal struggle of, do I want to give this to you yet? Because this is kind of really powerful. <laughs> I mean, I've had it. It's, it's yeah. a little op. It is, but uh, I've tried not to overuse it too much, and in fact, I've even used it for some dumb things sometimes, like talking to animals for Dremel, so. That's what, that's well, the not be- talking what to animals, talk, talking to plants, that's talking the, to plants. That's Sorry. the best. That, it, it's a fungus, but <laughs> you clearly it's don't different. know nature. Okay, so it, everybody hit, hit, hit me with one moment you're excited for for your character, and we'll start with Alder. We'll go all dear Thok, Dremel, and I'll go. Oh, I'm starting that I'm excited mm-hmm. for with my character. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited for you to learn. And that's the thing is I can't give you too much spoils, but I'm excited for you to learn where Alder comes from and why he is who he is. Because once we get to that point, if we, like... You guys know that he's from a place called the Jade Abyss, and that's what he says. That's not his hometown. Like spoilers. That I can tell you that much without giving you too much away. So that's not the Jade Abyss is where he resides, but that's not where he's from. The so. Opal Abyss. 
All right, Thok. Um, I'm excited to get back on that ship because I feel like the Thok that you know is slightly different than the Thok that's on the ship. Um, because obviously, like you've heard me talk about a couple of like the crew there in particular, and but him around Sue, uh, his first mate. And him not around her are two very different people. Like, he's obviously trying to hold it together now, but like, he's actually a very insecure person. And she kind of brings out that greatness of him. So, like, he feeds off her energy a lot. So, I'm kind of excited to get on, on that boat to see like the dynamic shift. Not much, but I'm looking forward to it. And, other things I can't really say because it'll spoil stuff, but that's the main one is whenever it happens, because right now we're not anywhere near it, but reconnecting with the crew. I slightly changed my answer. I also want to get on the boat because I want to learn how to wild shape into a shark. <sighs> oh, sure. Oh, because you have to have seen it. I have. Uh... No, because we, when it comes to summoning, me and Justin had a real long talk about what I can and can't do. So <laughs> You wanted to turn into a velociraptor. I didn't want to turn into a velociraptor. I wanted to summon it. It's different. It's just a ah. chicken without feathers. And it was actually uh, not a velociraptor. It was a plesiosaurus. Still, oh, God. Dinosaur. <laughs> no dinosaurs, my guy. Tremor. Oh, what are you excited for? I am excited for... When Dremel fully cracks. When his facade of being full... I mean, he is calm, but when when that burning ember comes out and isn't just a moment. Because I, I, I don't know what that's going to be. I don't know when it's going to be. I would imagine when we find the Red King. But I don't know. I don't know if the story's gonna going to unfold. I ain't gonna lie, I was surprised that when you showed your frustration towards me, like oh, towards yeah. Doc, I was like, oh, shit. Like, but it wasn't even like showing a frustration. It was just like a little shady. Like, he was just like, uh, yeah, it was very passive aggressive. Yeah, I think that would be the longest that it's come out. But it was very, but like, like you said, it's very like low level as opposed to the, and it, the, the deep description of how I was going to kill the Red King. Yeah, like it went away that quick too. So that's, I'm, oh, I ain't gonna lie, I'm kind of excited about that too. The Red yeah, King. You got some serious, deep-seated rage in there that I can't wait to see when it comes out. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Donner. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited to travel. Um, obviously, going to Valoria, going to the peninsula of this um the storm god like i'm i'm excited for all of that um because it's going to piece stuff together for you guys in my character and it's also going to piece things together for my character um and i just wherever we go first there's going to be information that i don't think anyone's going to see coming even me so it's it's super exciting to see again justin took a, a minuscule minor thing like lilacs and he's made it into something that's so important to my character's story i can only imagine what he's been sitting on with you know a character that we've been creating since the end of curse of Strahd. so i think it's going to be really cool yeah me too well that's it nice, uh... daddy I was gonna say no one's excited for my character, like what Durst my Durst character Durst. is gonna be. Manu. Yeska. Yes, Yeska. I am. I am excited for Manu, and his character arc, but I'm more excited for. I'm more excited for the Man in Crimson's arc. Ooh. Gang, gang. Do you have an idea of how you want to do arcs, or it's just going to be where we where we go when we do it? I have a few ideas. Always a man scheming. of a few words. I like it. Always scheming. On 
that, I think we should wrap up, everybody. Agreed. I like this uh, this impromptu kind of hash out we had. Like podcast discussion kind of thing. Oh, this will be a podcast. I'm going to cut this out. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. You don't want to.